Hey friends, I am Catherine and I want to do a little, a little bit of sculpting today. I want to decorate the side of this cup with some polymer clay because this cup can go in the oven and it'll be just fine. Hey. Um, so I've got some yellow polymer clay and I've got a little bit of green polymer. That, that is... That is not being quiet. I need you to be quiet, please. Um, I've got a little bit of green polymer clay, and I want to make. I want to make a pineapple on the side of this mug because I think it would be cute, and um, it's three dimensional when you do it with clay. So this will be fun. I'm gonna take some of this yellow and set it aside. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of take and smush this yellow down into a sort of tallish, but rounded at the corners. Actually, you know what? Let's roll it into a ball first and then smush it down because that'll give us the best results, hopefully. Hey. So then press it down. And I don't mind that it's got a little bit of green swirled through it, through it because sometimes pineapples have green swirled through them. And the green leaves my hands green, which is a little frustrating, but that's fine. It's whatever. It's cool. And I want the yellow portion to be about half as tall as the cup is. So that's actually probably a pretty good height, maybe a little bit taller. I've also got paint on my hands right now. Man, doing art is messy business. Um, I do want to smooth it down toward the edges and just kind of create a sort of rectangle with rounded corners. And that, I think, is a pretty good height. So now let's find where I want it. I've got my handle facing the left side that way the pineapple will face away from you while you're drinking from it and I want to just have the handle sort of held parallel to my table and then just place my yellow blob right on top and then once I found the place that I want it to be I just want to press it down especially paying attention to the edges that way everything slants downward toward the mug. There we go, something sort of like that. And then, once I've got it in the place that I want it to be, and the shape that I want it to be, and stuck down well enough, can sort of give up on smoothing it out because texture is fine in this because what we're going to do is take a toothpick and lay it across it and just score in lines hopefully somewhat equidistant from each other and parallel to each other and just all the way from one edge to the other going diagonally Ooh, I want that to be pressed down to the cup a little further at that edge there we go something like that okay and um, yes equidistant from each other and parallel to each other ish we don't have to be perfect about this because pineapples have cells of different sizes and that's what we're doing here is we're creating that grid pattern on the outside of pineapples that you see um which should be fairly easy to make hopefully just trying to press it in the same depth for each row go something like that okay and then once we've got that done 
and do the same thing but the opposite direction. And this is what will give us our, our squares. Sort of trying to make them equal distant with the first set of lines. And just all the way across and of a uniform depth, hopefully. But something like that. I don't know whether or not there's an easier way to do this. This is just the way that occurred to me. Okay. Now what we're going to do is take in at the top of each of these squares, press in the point of our toothpick. Now these on an actual pineapple would poke outward, but that happens to be really difficult to manage in clay. You can go through and make a tiny point and stick it on each one of these, but it's far easier and creates the same visual effect to press inward. It's a little less true to life, but it is far easier and faster and more fun. There we go. Just right at the top point of each of those squares that we made. Maybe sometimes starting as far down as the center of the square, but always leading upward in the same direction. There we go. And that is, in my opinion, a pretty good pineapple texture. So let's start on the leaves. I think what I want to do for leaves is take this green and divide it into three sections. So let's see if I can't do that fairly equally. Okay, three fairly equal sections of green. Um, now, that yellow that we reserved, we can take um, about half of it and pair it with one of those sections. And then we can take two-thirds of the remaining part and pair it with the second of those sections and the last remaining third with the third section. And then, hopefully, mix those together and come up with something that's three different colors of green. I know I probably shouldn't because it's just gonna get my hands all messy, but the fastest way I've found to mix colors together is to just roll them between your hands. All right, so there's the yellowest green. Let's actually pull a little bit of this yellow off of this one and set it aside because we can always add it back, but it's really hard to take it out once it's added in. All right, here's the next one. Very similar in color, but not quite exactly the same. And let's actually pull a little bit of this yellow off too. And then mix that together. And that should be the darkest of our greens. And let's, let's go back into the lightest one and make it just a little bit lighter. A little bit more yellow. Just so that you can see a clear delineation. Okay, so we've got three different shades of green. We've got very green palms. Um, let's take and press each of these greens into a ball and then take a cup or 
flat ruler or whatever you like and press each of those flat so uh, that was too soft I didn't let it sit long enough that's okay we'll roll it back into a ball and try again if polymer clay is too warm it will pull apart rather than peel up which can be a problem if you're trying to create something of a flat and uniform thickness all right so there's one See, pull apart. It was a little soft still, but that's okay. You can just kind of stick it back together. And there's two. And there's three. Okay, so what we're going to do for this is make our leaves. Now, the lightest leaves are going to going 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 to be in the center of our pineapple crown. So we will do those first. And what we will do to make our leaves is just take and cut it in stripes. Actually, let's use a bench scraper for that. That'll create a faster, straighter line. All right. This is a bench scraper, just in stripes of somewhat uniform width. And there we go. Okay, so those are our lightest leaves. We will do more with them in just a moment. These are our mid darkness leaves. We're gonna make those and set them aside. Leave them there for just a moment. And then these are our darkest leaves. There we go. So we've got light, mid, and dark. Um, for the very longest ones, what I want to do is with this one, I want to, if I'm on screen here and I'm not, so let me scooch those out of the way. All right, so with this, the longest of the light green ones, I want to just take and put a sort of curved point on the top there. Doesn't have to be perfect, just needs to be curved and sort of pointed. And then what I'm going to do is take and lay my toothpick across the length of it, if I can get it to stick on, and use my toothpick. Ooh, that's even a little bit too tall. Let's take that down a little bit in length. Take a little bit off of there. And see how that ends up. I probably took too much off of there, but that's okay. We can position it right because this is going to be the very top of our crown, this tip up here. So we're going to position it right to the middle of our pineapple and right below the lip of our mug. And then we're just going to use our toothpick to press it down from the center. That way the edges can be a little bit lifted, but the center has this nice crease line in it. Pretty simple. All right, next piece we take and do the same thing. Do just a bit of a curved point and take our toothpick and from the opposite side, place it and press down from the center. And that's pretty much what we're going to keep doing for all of these leaves. 
This should be a fairly quick process, but we'll see how it goes. I think three of the lightest ones, three of the mid colored ones, and then three of the darkest ones will probably give us the effect we're looking for, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. There we go, and then let's do some of these mid-dark ones. For these mid-dark ones, these are actually going to be longer than we're going to end up needing them. So what I'm going to do is just cut them in half on a diagonal, and that will create two leaves for me once I round out that back edge a little bit. Pretty simple, right? Simple, easy, not too terrible or challenging or frightening and then we'll just position one of those in the middle but off to one side a little bit actually we might even want that one a little bit shorter let's see let's just take off that much I think that ought to do it because I can always remove more but adding it back well in this particular case wouldn't be too challenging either but we don't want to do anything more than we have to work smarter not harder all right there we go and then our next mid-sized leaf we're just going to round out that edge a little bit and then bring it to the opposite side and press it in and then take another one and make it even just a little bit shorter and then round out that edge when I'm rounding out the edge I'm pulling the point more toward the center as well that way it's just a little bit more leaf shaped. Here. What were you doing? Sorry. I've got my bird on my shoulder and he is being a weirdo. There we go. And then just press it in and drag it upward and out. There we go, so that's three of the mid color leaves. Now let's go for the darker color leaves. I think I want to use these two curved ones as the outside edges. Um, they've already got really nice shapes for that, so I don't think I'll have to do anything to change them. Um, I will just take and place them right over and draw it outward and actually I might not use a third of these dark leaves I might just use the two to the outside yeah I'm not gonna use the third one and that way I end up with a nice looking pineapple crown that I can sort of curve around and play with and then what I want to do is take just tiny little scraps, ball them up, roll them so that they're just sort of ovals, and then use my toothpick to tuck them down right at the base there. Because it's the details that make things look good so long as the overall picture is what it should be the details are what people pay attention to go just right around the base there all right now next thing we're going to do is something that's a little bit fun right after we finish with these little bits right down here we're going to get out some chalk pastels 
because I think that's really what's going to make the whole thing pop is chalk pastels, hopefully, so long as it works out the way that we want it to, which sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. But if you don't try, you'll never know. So we're gonna try some chalk pastels on the yellow today because I want to, while it's got the sections pressed into it and everything, so it does look like a pineapple, I want to give it a little bit of extra oomph, shadow and color and interplay. Go. Although I always have really, I really always have a lot of fun with these tiny, itty, bitty things. There we go. Okay, so there's the base of our pineapple, and we can shove all these green bits out of the way. And they're all, I'm just going to be honest, they're going to get mixed all together. Oh, what are you doing on the camera? Seriously? Here. Okay, hope that didn't jostle you guys too much. Let's pull our pineapple back in. And that, we could stop right there and that would be an awesome looking pineapple. But let's grab a little bit of our chalk pastels and pull out this sort of orangey color. It's sort of red orange and scrape off just a little bit. that's ending up pinker than I intended it to but we'll try layering it on the yellow and see how that treats us um, here we go I've got this is just a terrible plastic paintbrush I'm just going to tap that into that hopefully orange ending up looking color and then tap it onto the bottom edges of my pineapple. Ooh, yes. I mean, it does definitely look pink, but I'm also absolutely liking it. And then we can just blow off the excess that settles onto our mug. But that is definitely an awesome thing and adds just an extra dimension of color that I really, really like. There we go. Let's just tap it into our clay right around the bottom just to accentuate the curve because this is, it is three-dimensional. It does curve outward, but we can make it look more so by making the bottom edges darker we can also do the same thing by making the top edges lighter. And then maybe we'll just take and brush it right along some of those veins as well. There we go. And that gives us that sort of really curved pineapple shape just by doing that right around the bottom edge. Let's see if we can't, let's take a little bit of white and do the same thing around the top edges and maybe like right around the tops of the leaves as well. So let's shake just a little bit of white and shave that off. And make sure that I brush off my brush really well because I don't want it carrying that pink up into the white and then just do the same thing tap it into the white so that I've got just a little cloud of white on the top of my brush and just powder it in right at the top edges the white's going to be more subtle because white doesn't white um white pastel doesn't like to show up on polymer clay very well. But subtle doesn't mean non-existent. And it does make a difference to the overall look and feel of 
the pineapple. And then just as I went to the outside with the pink, I'm going to go down the center with the white, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Yep, just right like that, perfect. And that is a pretty good pineapple. Let's take a little bit of that white and see if we can't dust it on the leaves. If that doesn't work out. Yeah, see, I just don't think the white's gonna show up on the green. It just doesn't want to. So with that in mind, let's instead use a bit of yellow and see if we can't get that to show up on the green. And of course, if that doesn't show up, we can always move over to brown. Let's just pick up some of that. And I don't mind layering the yellow into the white because the white's not going to pick up. There we go. Just right along there and then just gently blow it away. And right especially in that top crown where we had the extra yellow from the clay anyway. There we go. And that, that, in my opinion, is a pretty good pineapple. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Remember to subscribe because I put up new videos every day so there is always something new to see. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.